are 86 people who have died from the pandemic with 4,361 who are positive here in South Africa. Is the message filtering through to the vulnerable communities in a relatable manner? And if not, why? Tonight, we look at the intersection between medicine, literature, culture and language. Dr. Chidi Achebe is a medical doctor on the front lines in Boston, USA, and the son of world-renowned author Chinua Achebe. He joins us now. A very good evening to you. Dr. Echebe, and thank you so much for speaking to us. So COVID-19 is a lesson in global health, but let's look at the similarities, especially in the fatalities and the severity of it. Uh, African-Americans accounting disproportionately for the number of deaths there in the U.S. And here in South Africa, the message seems to be that people either in rural areas or in formal settlements are not heeding the call uh, to isolate why is this? What are the cultural dynamics here that we're missing? Well, first of all, thank you for having me. Um, I think let's look at the African-American example, and then we can get back to uh, the continent. So um, the African-American example um, is really one that should be seen in the context of uh, the social determinants of um, health. Um, so when you have a situation... Um, such as um, we find African Americans who are um, have more poverty, um, who have uh, less access to uh, fine um, health care, who have lower attainments of education, who have the legacy of racism and slavery, um, and then who have a greater burden of disease, whether it's diabetes or um, obesity or hypertension, you name it then that becomes really the best possible combination of factors um, to form a perfect storm for, um, you know, for the uh, destruction of entire communities. Mm -hmm. So we're seeing high proportions of death. We're seeing uh, greater numbers of ICU admissions from the African-American community, as well as Latinx communities. Let's not forget them as well. So people of color within the United States have this historical um, as well as disease burden that keeps many um, of them vulnerable to pandemics of this sort. Now, on the African continent, my, um, my view is that we need to find sophisticated ways to communicate what's going on uh, to our people on the continent. We can't have this highfalutin um, medical language. We have to find traditional ways of reaching our people um, it, through means that are comfortable to them. We have to talk to women's groups. Uh, let's look at some of these traditional ways. I mean, if you look at Achebe's literature, for instance, he talks about the town crier and the gong. I'm not saying go back to that, but I'm saying look at um, Afri Africo Afri African um, means, African channels um, uh, that have worked in the past to help us communicate. One of the very big things now on the continent um, in modern Africa is the cell phone. So we should use the cell phone to reach people and do public health announcements. The radio is still very big. Not all um, Africans have televisions, but those that do use that as well. Um, the miners in South Africa, for instance, mm -hmm. use their means of communication. So there are many things we can do to better reach our people and also convince them that this is real and that this should be taken seriously. Mm. Uh, you talk about the time cry in the book, Things uh, Fall Apart. And uh, mm. I, I want to look at uh, your father's work. Uh, many have said it's quite prognostic in the way that it tells the story of Africa. We talk about literature. We're basically talking about language and identity. So yeah. if we're talking about a modern problem such as you know, the coronavirus, looking at his works, is there anything there that talks, to about, talks about those ancient uh, means of knowledge systems that we can borrow from and, and, and see how we deal with this foreign concept? Absolutely. And there's also the cautionary tales, too. So Achebe was brilliant at um, examining conflicts, right? Um, whether it's the whether it's things fall apart, people call it a classic of African literature. It looks at really the clash between civilizations. But but um, but that's on the macro level. Um, there are also other tensions within that book and in Arrow of God, 
Antils of the Savannah. Um, indeed, a lot of his work um, discusses tensions and transitions and the pain of uh, clashes, of new events, new, um, t- um, if you like, epochs that uh, show up at the shoreline. So reading Achebe, and not just Achebe, read Camus, uh, the play, read, um, if you're religious, read um, St. Luke, who was a physician, Chekhov. Literature has a way of making things human, so that when policymakers are, um, then encounter challenges like coronavirus, they are taken by these great um, writers into an imag- imaginatory world that helps them humanize the condition, right? Um, Murakami, for instance, um, li- likes to talk about the weird and the bizarre. This is a weird and bizarre time. Um, Achebe centralizes the African culture and the African um, setting and makes it um, palpable for the reader in simple um, language of great beauty and craft and in communicating medical um, uh, uh, language and um, situations, we need to borrow some of those ideas from the writers. How do we reach our people in simple, beautiful, uh, you know, um, language that is effective um, and um, make sure that we keep them safe, mm. informed, um, and healthy? And I'm going so to, I think I'm going to you ask you this, Dr. Yeah. Achebe. I yeah. suppose what you're saying is, I'm imagining somebody like you who's a medical doctor on the front lines of fighting this in Boston where you are, that we need mm-hmm. to hear in South Africa, including our medical staff and uh, policy makers, to speak in an idiomatic way that people can understand. So what would we say to somebody who is in Kailicha on why is it important to stay home to uh, social distance, even though sometimes you don't even have the choice to do that? Well, you have to find out, first of all, and uh, we have to be um, humble. So we need to find out from our people, first of all, what do you understand by the coronavirus, okay? So that we can begin from where they are, as opposed to uh, talking down at them, right? So the first big uh, challenge would be to make sure we reach our people where they are, and then we build from there. And then we have a, a discussion that... Um, it it essentially achieves three things. One, uh, make sure that they understand the severity of the disease. Two, uh, we have to make sure that they understand how it's transmitted and why it's actually quite dangerous. Three, we have to be absolutely clear that um, this is real. So some of the uh, misconceptions, some of the misinformation that's out there has to be tackled um, in a way that convinces our people that this is um, a very serious illness that causes widespread disease, um, and then also be able to communi- communicate to them quite clearly how infectious this is and how it's passed on through respiratory droplets, by talking even, coughing, sneezing, and that we need to wear masks or cl- if you don't have a mask, you can use a cloth mask um, while you're outside, the social distancing. Please wash your hands. Um, if you have access to hand sanitizers, do that. And, and, um, and re- essentially reach them where they are and build. If we mm. don't do that and we talk down of them, then we're going to exacerbate this, this uh, thinking that it's a foreign disease and it's only something that um, mm. foreigners are, mm. you know, are, are having. Obviously, literature is a tool for entertainment and education. But just from your point of view, as a medical doctor, why mm. is it important? Is it because uh, it speaks to us in our voice, in our, uh, our reflecting our lived experience? So how do we connect it for some people who still can't make the connection because I'd imagine there are parents out there who still have to explain to their little children. So if you're going to pull out a book and say, let's read this so I can explain it to you in our language, why Mm -hmm. coronavirus is important. So let's use things fall apart, for instance. And and before I say that, literature humanizes um, 
pop, entire populations and peoples and connects peoples who are in diverse uh, um, you know, places and cultures um, and then centralizes um, the story in such a way that people are able to draw um, you know, inspiration that helps them in their day-to-day -day life. So if we look at uh, Chebe's work, for instance, Things Fall Apart, um, or Antils, or any of his great novels, we, we see, for instance, a, a tension between the arrival of the Europeans and um, the, uh, the clash between that arrival and traditional culture represented by the protagonist of Konkwa. Now, the, for, if you're going to explain it to somebody who's read it, who's maybe a teenager, uh, you can say, look at the arrival as the arrival of coronavirus, right? And how the arrival of the coronavirus has caused a great deal of upheaval in many ways that um, we saw in that novel where the, the clash of these two cultures caused a great deal of uh, upheaval and death, right? And so that is just one example of many where literature is incredibly um, useful in communicating um, the, uh, the, the similarity between um, real life and imagination. Mm. And the role of women, which is something that Achebe also yes. um, yeah. reflects in Antils of the Savannah, looking yeah. at health systems in Africa, especially those at a communal level, a, a lot of that is staffed by women. How do we yes. empower them to help the rest of the communities to gather together to help fight the coronavirus? Yes, yes, yes. As you know, you educate a woman, you educate an entire society. Uh, uh, women uh, in Antilles of the Savannah um, uh, uh, serve to, to great roles. Uh, they are one. There's, um, there's one that, uh, one role in which the, uh, the, the women are the future. They're the, the hope. They are the, um, their symbolism for what can be. Um, in Africa. Um, on the other hand, it also shows their brilliance, the fact that they're um, incredibly well organized and talented. On the African continent, we know that women's groups, that if you want anything done, you go to the women, you talk to the women, um, they are the ones that then are able to communicate to children and get the word out. And so working with our women in a variety of ways through media, through their organizations, through cultural groups is key if you're going to win any battle. And this is not just for healthcare. I'm talking about any battle, whether it's education, economic, etc. Without women, you've lost the entire war. Thank you so much for speaking to us, sharing your insights. Dr. Okay. Chidi Echebe Thank is... You. It's a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for speaking to us. Chidi Echebe, medical doctor on the front lines in Boston, USA, who's also helping fight the coronavirus. He's son of the world-renowned author Chinua Echebe. Just uh, uh, drawing the parallel or showing us the interconnectedness between literature and uh, medicine, how the two can combine to help fight the coronavirus and how not only is it a form of enjoyment but a tool an education tool for uh, your children your families on how we can all band together and uh, combat the COVID-19 virus and its spread and now let's take a look